Hello everyone, this is Alan Emmerich from Victory Point Games, and I'm here on a mission, a mission for the crown, the latest offering from Victory Point Games. This is a two-player deck-building chess game. If you can think of what kind of game you might get if Dominion had a baby with chess, you would be looking for the crown. But now you found it! So let's take a look inside and see what you found. For the Crown, as you can see, is part of our new boxed line of games. It also comes in a polybag edition without a mounted board. But uh, let's break the shrink on this, which of course I wisely cut my fingernails the night before, so I can't open it. And see what's inside, shall we? The box comes in a Glorious slip cover. Let's see if we can put that over here. And the new Victory Point Games uh, box with our logo conspicuously added. Inside the box, we find let's see a full size rule booklet of, let's see, nine pages in length. Now, the rules are actually about three pages long. There's a reference in the middle with the cards and the counters explained and then some cool variants. So the rules will take you next to no time at all to learn. This is a pretty low complexity game but boy does that, that does not mean it's simple. You get the unmounted board. You'll notice the chest-like qualities but on this board each player has a barracks where new pieces are trained before they are uh, mobilized and put onto the map for play. Here you see 150 glorious playing cards. Now, uh, next time, fingernails. Uh, you'll find that these are the full-size cards, poker size, just right for sleeving, and with rounded corners, shovel like a dream. Each card in for the crown has two functions so every card you get you'll have decisions to make again the rules aren't tough the decisions are you'll find the chess pieces uh, over ten dozen two-sided chess pieces which includes of course the classic pawn bishop rook knight king and queen but also several new pieces to add to your game with new functions uh, such as the uh, Oracle, the Immortal, the Hero, the Spy, uh, the Dragoons, Chargers, Banshees, Chancellors, Sphinx, Warlords, Snipers, Knight Riders, and more. Those are the uh, uber-thick laser-cut counters, by the way, in case you're wondering. Bags. And if you buy the box version of the game, look what else you get you get the mounted game board. Now this is a puzzle cut board, but it's only three pieces. So we're hoping that most people can handle a three piece puzzle to make their mounted game board. All right. And then all the other usual goodies inside the box. But you know what? The proof is in the playing. And for that, we better get this game started. Come on, let's go play. Count. Three. Joining me is Stephanie Newland from Victory Point Games. Say hey, Steph. Hey, Steph. Yes. And uh, what we need to do is start by punching out the uh, gloriously thick laser cut counters. And uh, so let's get those punched out. While we're doing that, I'll kind of explain. Now, Stephanie has played both um, Dominion and uh, chess. So this game should be uh, an easy pickup to learn. And hopefully I can explain it to you just as easily. Now you'll notice there's an awful lot of pieces, but the neat thing is they're all two-sided. There can only be so many pieces in the game, and the counter mix uh, accounts for uh, maximum mobilization for people who go crazy. Uh, each game, like Dominion, you have uh, certain cards you can have in the bank of cards. You'll see here that there's 14 stacks of cards you can buy, but uh, there's a lot of 
extra cards and variants. So you'll be playing this game a lot of different ways, just like Dominion. There's lots of other cards to try out. Players begin, again, like Dominion, with a set hand. You get uh, ten cards, and you hold a five-card hand at a time. And you'll see some familiar features, such as the title, the value of the cost, should you buy it, and um, the two features of the card. This is a, a treasure card. It's your basic $1 card. Or you can use it to train a new pawn unit and put it in the game. That's the training action. And you start with four $1 cards and four cards that give you uh, a pawn or a special order. Special order? What's that? Well, we'll shuffle these up and show you in just a second. Here, let's get these out of the way for now. Don't worry about sorting them. Sorting is for losers. Here, shuffle up your cards. And we need a king each. So, find a king. Do you want to be white or yellow? I'll be white. White, okay, I'm yellow. There's my king. And that is the setup. Shuffle your cards, deal out five. And you're ready to play. Now, um, should I go first? Yeah, please. All right, I'm gonna put the draw piles here. All right, well, my initial card is Look at this, five peons. I got all the money cards to start with. Lucky, lucky. So, uh, well, you know, you think that's luck, but I thought it was pretty skillful to draw five cards. <laughs> um, I will take an orders, or a quartermaster card. Now, the quartermaster card, I can use either during my order phase or my buy phase to supplement my treasure. And supplementing my treasure is looking pretty good right now. So, your go. That Only gets two bucks in the discard pile. Now, Cards. you start with uh, an order if you want to move your king. I didn't want to move my king, but you may want to move yours. I actually do. I have a lot of guards. They can deploy right next to the king. Okay. Uh -oh. them out there. It's war already. Yeah. Okay, then you can do an action. Uh, I would probably train a guard. Let's do that. All right, now, this does not get discarded. When you mobilize a card, it's trash. Trashed, okay. So that's out of your deck now, and you get a pawn in your barracks. My barracks. You can place it on the board during your next order phase. Got it. And go right. shopping. Get a buy. I've got big two bucks. The two dollar cards are here. Drawing extra cards and getting extra money always seems good. All right. That. All right. So now, um, now i got to put down my hand here. I will... In my order, I will march my king for my train or for my action. I will uh, train a guard, get my pawn started. Then I'll go shopping with my massive dollar. Wow, I got a buck. I don't think I can buy anything for a buck. So, since there are no one dollar cards to purchase, it's your turn. All right, four peons and a guard. My order is going to be to deploy my pawn. Now you need an order card to deploy it adjacent to your sovereign. So you have right. To. So put um, that in your discard pile if you want to use it. You know, no, they they can start on the first two rows, right? Correct. Okay. A foot unit, which has got the little pawn symbol beside it. All the foot units show a little edged border with a pawn on it. They can uh, deploy to the first two rows. Every other unit, like say. A bishop class, this is an acolyte, uh, or the queen, deploys on only your first row unless you have a special card that allows it to deploy elsewhere. Uh, then my, my action is going to be to get another... Calling all guards. Calling all guards. And my purchasing, I've got four. Four bucks. I want Time a, to go crazy. Uh, not a champion. I actually just saw... Four bucks I in I here. I actually yeah. just want another champion. Ah, the legend. Alright. Ah. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Right. My go... Uh, I will use my order to get another pawn ready to go. Looks like we're kind of playing opposites here. I will train a guard to get another pawn standing by. I have one dollar, but my quartermaster lowers the cost of all cards by one dollar, but not below zero. So, I can buy a $2 card for a dollar, and I will buy Versatility. 
Now what that does is I can mobilize a special pawn unit called the striker. The striker is kind of cool in that he can move forward to any of the three spaces in front as well as capture to any three spaces in front. Or as a move he can also just run straight back as far as he can go provided he doesn't make a capture. So he can get himself out of trouble if he gets too deep. I'm liking that. We've got my champion, four peons. My action is going to be to deploy another pawn. Alrighty. Oh, you got a lot of treasure piled up over there. I do. I have a total of six. I actually get to draw another card. Okay. Or is this, uh, okay, so this is my action. It's to play that, the that will be your action. So you're not mobilizing a new guy this turn. I'm not. You're going to do the blue action. Oh, and you got more money, of course. Big seven dollars. Seven dollars! You're shopping the high rent district now. I am going to go with the armor. Going to buy armor, and that mobilizes a warlord piece. The warlord piece can move any way it wants within two squares and attack there. Warlord is a very heavy duty piece. <clears throat> now, we're going to fast forward to the middle of the game and show you what it looks like mid game. I thought we'd show you what it looks like with all kinds of uh, amazing and crazy pieces on the board getting ready to move on each other. I have a chancellor and some strikers, a dragoon, and a hero. And uh, some of these units move in new and exciting ways. For instance, the Dragoon moves like both a king, or a rook and a knight. And uh, the hero moves like a horse, but instead of going two and over one, it goes three and over one or two. So it's, uh, it's pretty wild, and there's, uh, there's lots of possibilities going on on the board. Uh, and the, the game is full of all kinds of new pieces. And you can always remember them because the card you had to trash to mobilize a particular piece also has its movement instructions on a little map. So all we have to do is look over at the trash cards pile to see how pieces move. So it's very convenient. Uh, Stephanie, it's your turn. All right. Well, my chess move this turn. I'm going to start making some inroads towards your king, but I think we're just going to try to push ahead here. Uh oh, I'm being pushed. So my order, my action is going to be. Let's see, we need to. Uh, hmm, need to get some more guys out here. Okay. So I'm gonna get ready for another bishop. Up. Oh, time to mobilize. There's lots of bishops in the pile. There we go. For my buy. Yeah. Two gold and uh, nothing left to purchase it. All right. Okay, my chess move. Now, this one moves like a, a king and a knight, not a rook and a knight. So that's that's my problem here. I don't have enough oomph to make anything go with that. I am going to do my chess move. I will put another king on the board. Now, you asked earlier about does the game end when a certain number of piles are depleted? Right. Other deck building games have a limit to uh, how many cards can be purchased before the game just ends. Right. Well, there's no such limit in For the Crown. Instead, the game ends when you eliminate your opponent's last sovereign piece. Now, the sovereign pieces are the kings, but there are other sovereign pieces uh, available in the counter mix. Uh, you could have an anointed, that's also a sovereign piece, but they're not in this particular game. But the king is, so you can get a second king out, and you have to, you would have to get both of my kings to uh, knock me out of the game. Which, uh, I have two. Yep. Yes, so that's pretty possible. Okay, for my order, uh, I am going to march, I believe, a mounted unit twice. And that's going to be my order. Now, a hero marches three and then over one or two. So one, two, three, and then over one or two. And then one, two, three, and then over two. No, I'll just go one, two, three, and over one. So I'm going to move to there and try and keep some pressure on this side of the board. So that's my chess move. Uh, my action will be to train a knight, just your basic run-of-the-mill knight, 
And then shopping wise, I'm looking at six exciting dollars, and uh, we need more towers, which gets you a rook or three dollars, and both of those are pretty darn fine. So that's what I'm up to. Well, since I am under threat, I don't have much of an option. Gotta take the chance there. Right. As much as I'd like to deal with that striker. And because that is my order, I again cannot deploy. Don't you have any bonus order cards? I actually don't. I've been taking all money and extra actions, extra buys. Oh, whoops. So that strategy was working out to build up the number of units I've got, okay. but now I can't issue more orders. All right. When you get the high value ones, they give you Additional bonus orders, orders and all right. kinds of cool yep. stuff. I'll use my champion. Draw a card. Plus one buy. Plus two dollars. All right. We've got two, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my goodness. And how many buys? Uh, two, two buys, buys and 13. 13 bucks. Yikes! I'm ah. going to take the last queen, and I've got four left for a legend. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay. So all the queens are on my side. Yes, well, there you go. All right, well, I in my order phase have the bureaucracy and I am going to use that to march or attack with any one of my foot units um, now I can't do the same unit twice so if I move that guy in and turn it to a queen I couldn't attack your king anyway. there's no no cheesing around like that that's good but what I can do is I can march with this guy and pop the knight and then with my regular chess move I can uh, I can queen up a bit here. I uh, better not go there. There I could put a queen. That's probably a good spot. Let me queen up here. Where's the queen up crew? Ah, uh, there. Oh, you got one? Okay. All right, so that was my, my stealthy, uh, unbeknownst to you move. Um, for actions, Draw two cards, get another action, get a buy, place a card from my hand in the deck. There's my quartermaster, hot diggity. Oh, except that's an order and I'm in the action phase. All right, so I'll put that on the top of the, no, the quartermaster on the top of the deck, because that's the card I want. And then we will go shopping, five bucks. We will take some patronage ah, and wipe out the board. Anyway, <clears throat> hopefully this gives all of you an idea of the kind of back and forth chess game. It becomes a real uh, cool mental exercise. One of the neat things about For the Crown 2 is the build-up. It's an easy game to teach, especially if you've got an experienced player who's played Dominion and or chess. Uh, they're in pretty good shape for learning this game. But the fact that you add things slowly and you think them through as you buy them, as you train them and put them on the board, and the possibilities just keep multiplying out in front of you. For the Crown is a second edition. It includes the first edition game redone in the Gold Banner version. And it also includes the first expansion kit inside. So that's why there's so many extra cards to uh, add to the to the stock of cards to choose from. So you'll be playing this game a long time before you start seeing like repetitive combinations. I have really been enjoying the heck out of For the Crown. I, I got this just before the uh, the winter holiday break and I must have taught it to half a dozen new people and I've been playing it over and over again just having a great time with it. Honestly I think you will be making an amazing discovery picking up For the Crown. Thank you. <laughs>